Um, yeah. Just wanted to find out for you how you feel the Home Theatre project's going, as you're the host here at St. Bridges Hospital. So, how's it going? Well, um, yes, I, I think it's going great. Um, I'm quite apprehensive about Saturday, and I hope we get lots of happy patients ready to watch. Um, and I think Darren is just perfect for our hospital because he's so easy going and he's so friendly. Come on, maintenance, let's go and entertain. That way! Now, the show basically, I like to apologise before I start. It's, this is the problem. As you can see, the TV has been, been bandaged up because the TV's not working too well. So, maintenance, maintenance, what are you doing by the camera? You're meant to be here fixing the TV. You do the maintenance and I do the entertainment. That's what the company's all about. Sorry, she's new. She hasn't quite read the menu as well as I have. So, she, Belle, that's her name. Yes, you can do any bell joke you want. Ring that bell. Tinkerbell. All of them. She's heard them all, haven't you? I'm not quite being amusing. <laughs> so, we're going to aim. She's going to do the maintenance, and I will be doing the entertainment. My aim will be to entertain you until the TV's fixed, hopefully. So, let's start with the basics. I've read through the manual. I've been on two training days, so I think I've got it down. I just want to start gently. We have a little simple game, a silly game. Just seeing who's willing to go with me on the journey. So, who is willing to put their hands up? Just rub their heads. Just to wave their hands above their heads. Who's going to go with me? I've got a couple of winners, got some more winners, and a shake them. If you're up there, the shake them, enjoy it. Loving your work, loving your work. Drop your hands, drop your hands, I love it. <laughs> now, I know some people are like, no, that's not for me. That's absolutely fine, because my logic is never force entertainment onto anyone. Chapter 2 of the manual. I've read it well, I've told you, I've read it well. Now, this one, I want you to imagine you're on a roller coaster. Mark, South End, Orton Towers. Yeah, Orton Towers, yeah, you've been Orton Towers, I can see it in your eyes, I know she's been. I want you to imagine that, that big dipper, the up and down. I want you to imagine the feeling of being on it. And if you can scream, I want you to scream. Trust me, I will scream louder than anybody in this room, alright? So go with me, I'll even demonstrate how loud I'll scream, so I'll, 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 I'll get rid of all your sounds. I told you, I'll be up there. See, I told you, I'm, I'm not going to be gentle with it. I'll go right for it. The manual says, if you don't commit, they won't commit. So that's what we're going to do. Are you ready to scream with me? On three. One, two, three. <laughs> I love your work. I love you as well in the day. You're right in it. I love it. So we're making progress. So the idea is, she will be doing the maintaining. I will be doing the entertaining. And my name is Darren. I missed that, I missed that bit up. Always introduce yourself before you start. Sorry, forgive me, forgive me. Now, as the TV is broken, I'm going to go old school. Games. I think sometimes we forget how good games can be. So we've had a bit of fun. Now I'm going to have a look at some other games, like the classics. Anyone a fan of Cluedo? Cluedo fans? No, 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 I didn't think so. Yeah, not my cup of tea. Your cup of tea? If you like a bit of Cluedo, like a bit of mystery. I see that in you. You're the man who can. I love, I love your work. And I, I know you have a Guinness as well. See, I've done my research. <laughs> Second rule of entertainment. Know your crowd. I know what you like. Now, Sabutio. Anyone a Sabutio fan? I know you don't like your sports. You're ready to leave. You're like, no Sabutio. If you bring that out, I'm walking out. So I won't do that. Monopoly. Any Monopoly fans? Oh, I see we've got a nurse going, well, I could be a Monopoly. <laughs> now, oh, this will be a controversial Monopoly because I know that in my house, my mum was the queen of Monopoly. Always the banker. Ladies, were you always the bankers? No, see you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because ladies, gentlemen, they're always good with the money. They know how to look after it. However, when they pass go, they always take a little bit extra, don't they? <laughs> see, they, they can't disagree because they know they all do it. So I probably won't open a monopoly because, lads, we're all going to lose today. So I won't do that one. But I remember my mum was always the winner. She was always the boat. And she always won. Couldn't understand it. Now, drafts. Yeah. Not my cup. Oh, we've got drafts fans. Yeah. You, you good at drafts? Yeah. yeah. You good at drafts as well? Yeah. All right, I see that. That was like, yeah, I'm the best. No, I'm the best. I'm the best. <laughs> All right, maybe, maybe we'll have a draft off later. Yeah. You never know. Because that's what we can do. When the TV's not on, we've got options. We've got lots of options. Hello, how are we doing? You okay then? Good to see you. Nurse is checking me out. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Pack of cards. I have to say, possibly, one of the greatest inventions. Because with a pack of cards, you can play any game. 
As a child, you can play a game as simple as snap. As you get a little bit more adventurous, you can delve into poker, Texas Hold'em. Or you can play solitaire. I didn't realise you could play solitaire with a pack of cards. I thought you could only do it on a computer. <laughs> Until my granddad sat me down and went, this is how you do it. And there it was. Magic before my very... You know what I'm saying, David? It's serious. I realised you could do it. And I was excited by that. But I'm excited by games. Because games you play with others. Games you get to include other people. You get to enjoy and share a moment together. And hopefully today, while I entertain, we're going to share lots of different moments. Now, these boxes remind me of a certain game. Remind me of a certain TV show that incorporates red boxes. Any idea on what game I could be talking about that can go on TV that has red boxes? What was that, my lovely? Queen of Hearts. I may be a little bit too young to know that thing. <laughs> Is there any other game that has red boxes that we play? Do you know I hear a couple of people saying do you know deal. Maybe we could today play our own version. Our own customised version of Deal or No Deal. Because I think it's a good game, it's worth giving it a go. Maintenance, give me a bit more volume. Of course. Now, for me, 
it reminds me of times I shared with my dad. And that was the only time it would be just me and my dad. My mum wasn't a fan. She would go, let you guys watch that. My dad would always be the old boy. I'd always be Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I would just sit there and just enjoy watching the show. It also, for some people, reminds them of Christmas. That one of Christmas special that you get. And you oh, go, yeah. there they are. They're the trotters. Off they go. Nice. Let's have our second one. Anybody? You can see the big tube brain going. I can see lips moving, sing along. Now, you got it? I know you've got it. I know you've got it. What is it? Queen. What song is it though? We are the Of course. Now, when I came to visit, you told me that was your tune. <laughs> See, I'm a man of my word. When you're doing entertainment, you must do your research. I told you I was going to have a winner for you. That put a smile on your face, so put a smile on my face. Can we have our second one, please? Our third now. <laughs> Cut it a little bit sooner or I may embarrass myself. Now, Emma, dancing queen. Any memories? Because I saw everyone get up there. It was a beautiful room. I saw people, oh, I saw the hands going up. It reminds me of weddings. Every good wedding I've been to has had an ABBA moment. I think you can't have a good wedding without a bit of ABBA. Is that right? Yes. You agree with me? Yes, sir. That was a solid one. Good. ABBA. One more. I see some happy people right now. I, I see the head going, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to keep singing it then. I thought we know you got it now. I thought we had to sing. You can keep singing if you want. Sing it for me now. All right, David. <laughs> this is a message to you. Oh, oh. I just wish I had the head. <laughs> you, know, you know whenever Bob Marley comes out, I just want to shake my head. But I haven't quite got the head. Now, I know that that has a special place in a lot of people's hearts. Bob Marley was always filled with music. Always uplifting. Take you out of what you're feeling and go, Don't worry, about to dig. Got everything to dig. Gonna be alright. It's a good message. And I learned from a very early age that Bob Marley wasn't his full name. As you will quite rightly be able to tell me, it was Robert Nestor Marley. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. You're looking at me like I could be wrong. Am I right? Yeah. All right. It is there, just checking, just checking, man. You, you, you know you're right. I know. Yeah. So, I remember being, being given that information. And I was like, okay. And every time I went to school, my teacher would say, Bob Marley. I'm like, no, no, no. Robert Nestor Marley. And I thought, we're intelligent. Now, that's our music box. Music. Memories. But we have two more boxes. Maintenance, how are we doing for time? That, that doesn't help me by going, <laughs> that's, that's not a time, all right? Fair enough, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Can't get a start these days, just can't get a start. Now, this box is food. Food is so important. I come from a family that believe that if you eat together, you stay together. And I'm a big food eater. Whenever I'm watching a TV, I know you guys are still broken, but I'm working on it. I love to have my food on my lap and a way out of So what I'm going to do right now is to try and take you to a memory of food. I'm going to pass on some scents, seasoning, smells, and see what connection it has for you, where it takes you. Does it remind you of a person, of a place, and a smell? All right, I heard that story. I heard that jerk chicken, jerk pork, mustard. I see the mmm. Take you back to a place. I can see the eyes opening wide in places too. Who go? Oh, hello, I'm awake. That's a good one. 
Oh, he likes that one. He <laughs> likes that one. Now, jerk chicken for me, this smell reminds me of a Sunday. Sunday morning, waking up, and my mum had already started cooking. Before I'd even opened my eyes, dinner was being prepared. There it is. You go, oh, there it is. And that was the smell I grew up on. When I smell that, I instantly think of my mum. I instantly think of a happy place and a full place. You know that when the belly's full? That is the smell I get of going, all right. That is the smell for me. That instantly takes me somewhere, as it did you, sir. As it did you and you and you and you. It's amazing what smells can do. Places that it can take us that we may have forgotten about. So, I have one in particular that this gentleman here may remember. This one's slightly different. As I go around a bit, how do you smell that one? That's that one. That's. <laughs> because garlic. the garlic. And ginger garlic in particular, used in a lot of traditional Asian dishes. And if my, they can even smell it from there. It's the beauty of it. You open it up, and away it goes. And that's what a smell can do. It doesn't just reach your nose, it fills a room. It makes a room where it could be just you and a loved one. It makes the tummy rumble. That's why I thought I'd do it just before dinner. I turned it right, because if I did this after dinner, you'd probably get quite angry with me. Now, I know that this smell is used a lot in Asian cooking. And I know that you, sir, are a big biryani fan. <laughs> and and I, I got a bonus today in doing my research that the lady next to you is the maker of the biryani. And I heard your lamb biryani is pretty special. <laughs> so, hopefully one day I'll get to taste this. I'll, I'll come and visit for the biryani. You're welcome. Good stuff. Now, that's what food can do. It reminds you of a wonderful person and also a beautiful place. Now I have one more box <coughs> yet to open. Now I'm going to open I'm, this one now. I'm eating the food with comfort. Comfort. Not southern comfort to drink, <laughs> but with, with comfort. Being in a comfortable place. And that doesn't just mean that the chair's comfortable, it means being with people that make you feel comfortable. Yeah? So speaking of comfort, I'm going to open our last box. TLC. Tender loving care. We all need a bit of that in our lives. And I want to investigate tender love and care because I really think that's really important. To feel, to feel loved, to feel cared for. And I want to go back to a place where you feel the most comfortable. A place where you feel the most relaxed. Even if you want to just close your eyes right now. And just be in that place where you go, you know when you go, when you can just take your shoes off, pick the toes out, run it through that soft carpet, or lie down, or whatever you've got. But I'm presuming, guessing, most of you would have carpet. Carpet like this, mate. Run your fingers through it like it's, like it's your toes. Spread your fingers through it. Have a feel. Feel like a good carpet? Yeah. Yeah! You like that carpet? Would you like that carpet underneath your feet? Do you know that carpet underneath me? I feel it's a good one. It's an expensive brush. Because I knew you're expensive people, I didn't go for a cheap brush. I went for a nice expensive brush. Because I, I know that if you're, if you're going to put your feet out and put it in something, it's going to be expensive. So, I'm glad that one feels good. Now, for me, when I talk about being in a place where there's tender love and care, cleanliness is so important to me. Being clean. And I believe there is nothing in this world cleaner than a baby. And you're looking at me like, no, I'm cleaner than a baby. But no, I think that baby smell, when you hold a baby and you just smell their head, that, <laughs> you just can't beat it. Everybody in this room, I bet has done that to a baby. And if not, I guarantee everyone in this room had it done to them at some point. That I can guarantee. Probably not at this age, some of you probably go, what do you mean? What's in my head? But <laughs> I bet when you were a baby, somebody went and enjoyed that smell. So I'm going to bring it back. 
that Johnson baby smell. That's what they call it, the Johnson baby smell. <laughs> you can't argue with a bit Johnson's baby. Because in all honesty, we're all Johnson's baby. Yeah? Okay, no, I won't get in your head. Don't worry, I won't get in your head. Big up maintenance. Make you smile. <laughs> Didn't work. Now, that baby. It's a beautiful thing when you're a baby because you're carefree. You just live it. You're not worried about bills, you're not worried about health, you're not worried about anybody else. You're just living. I miss those days. I miss being a baby. I didn't know. So I can't miss what I don't know. Is that true? However, one thing I do know is being here with you has really helped me. Because away from here, I don't really socialise much. I like to keep myself to myself. Yeah. I really just sit in doors and watch TV, if I'm really honest. Like, I'm a TV addict, but like, X Factor, get it. However, today, I'm with you guys, and I think maintenance, are we, are we about done over here? Like, can I start like, taking it down now, yeah? Thank you. So, I think that your TV now should be fixed. But the question I put to you is this. Do you want me to turn it straight back on? Because I don't want it. And I don't really want to tell mine on when I get home. I want to speak to somebody. I want to experience a conversation. I want to play a game with somebody. So, if I've taken anything from today, which I hope that we can be sharing something, I can take away your happiness. Because seeing you smile, seeing you have a good time, has made me have a good time. And I know that hopefully I've made a few of you happy, means that I can keep your job. Because today is my first day, and I'm just going to be really honest with you, I've been a bit cheeky, and maintenance is actually the boss. I know I gave her a few orders, and I kind of been going, oi, sort it out, but she's actually the boss, and she gave me this opportunity to be here with you guys today, so. I'd like to firstly thank you, Maitland. Oh, she's half smiling. And again, I'd like to thank all of you guys. And I say that whenever you think about turning back on your TV, think about us, maintain and entertain. And hopefully that you can have a good time together. So on behalf of the company, I'd like to say, see you later. And thank you. How did the show compare to what you expected? It was brilliant. It was so good. And um, it was just warm and funny and sweet and, and relevant to people in the Walterson um, at St George's Hospital. And I think it was great. And it was a brilliant one-man show. That's so difficult to do. And he just, yeah, it was genius. He had so much energy. And when you're sitting in here for so long, you need somebody to bring in that energy. It was great. You know, really well done. I think it would be great if they could do that here. Sort of every now and then. Did it brighten up your day? It did. It surely did. And it gave me something to look forward to, which is good too. Yeah. It gave me, I was looking forward to this all day. And ever since I read the notices on the notice board, that the theatre was coming here because it's been too long since I've been to the theatre. And now I want to go to Stratford.